Welcome back, guys, to our channel, to the Chaotic Pair Podcast. What's up, what's this up? This is podcast number three. Four. 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 We don't need a and number. And we are officially, it's spooky season. <laughs> That's why we got a pumpkin. We got pumpkin. We're excited. We got some content that is kind of fitting. Yeah, what do we got? Tell them quick. Today we're talking about, drum roll, please. That was horrendous. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about mermaids. mermaids. Mermaids from all over the world. There's a lot of people that like to dress up for Halloween like mermaids. So I think really? we're on brand. they can't move. Maybe it's a skirt. They wear a skirt. Yeah, but like it goes all the way down to their legs where they got to be like this and they, go, they start walking like penguins. You do know that there's like bridal dresses that are mermaid style. Yeah, but it doesn't go all the way down. So that is exactly how this would be. What? A mermaid costume. It would be the same style of skirt. Yeah. So you would not waddle. I don't know. Anyways. Gigi. Today we Hold are on, talking. Are you water. being psycho? <laughs> we had to do a bit of a pause. Someone forgot to bring their water bottle. <laughs> But as I was saying, before I was rudely interrupted, Sorry. Um, we will be talking about mermaids, more specifically, the folklore behind mermaids, so like the myths in different sections of the world. So first place to start, what, what are you doing, sir? So I can see the picture. You don't know, I need to read, right? So I can show you the picture when it's time for the picture. Wow. My lord. So I thought we could start in the Philippines. Okay. There, by the way, sorry, side mark before we start, and I start butchering things. English is not my first language. Pronunciation-wise, on different languages in my forte. So if I butcher someone's language, pardon me, it's not... Yeah, chill out. Perfect. It's not purposeful. Yeah. Okay. So Philippines, they believe... In sirenas, which is actually a Spanish world. Sirens. See, that is the complicated part. So in our culture, we say sirenas, which like you would say la sirenita. That would be the little mermaid. But there's like in English, you also have sirens, which is a totally separate thing. Okay. So when people say sirenas, like you think mm -hmm. it's a siren, but it's not. It's a mermaid. Aren't sirens and mermaids the same thing? So they're like different myths, right? Like mermaids. They're like cousins? No. Yeah. See, like mermaids technically can be nice. Okay. Well, like sirens have a very clear reputation of just being pretty vicious things. Oh. Yeah. But they're about the same. But aren't mermaids just made nice in like Disney and shit? But like an actual like pirate mythology or whatever. They were always like the ones that would call them down. So and that's the thing, right? Kill them. What people think is... When they talk, nice Chris, when they talk <laughs> about like pirate stuff, they were talking about sirens, right? Yeah. They weren't talking about mermaids. It's really the same thing. I think they're pretty similar, but it depends on where you're looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. But in the Philippines, <coughs> uh, they call it manjidara, manj mangidara, that might be totally butchered. Mangidara? Mangidara. Mangidara. Mm. I think we butchered that. Or sirenas. Yeah, and they're considered to be a mythological sea creature from Filipino culture. In some regions of the Philippines, sirenas are known or portrayed as vicious mermaids. Uh, they are known to be aquatic creatures with the head and torso of a human female and the tail of a fish. Uh, and then they're also basically described as mythical guardians of water. And what do they guard? The water. From people? Yeah. Only people? What I mean, about the like, you know. You know. The creatures that like to eat people. I mean, they like to eat other creatures. What does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? What? <clears throat> like killer whales and shit. I don't think they would have an issue with that. That doesn't make any sense. I think they're just like, when they say guardians, they mean like, I mean... Humans are quite destructive, so. That's true. I think that they're just meant to protect. Like, apparently, killer whales also like to just screw with other creatures. 
Like oh, there's a vicious. video where I was watching um the killer whale was just knocking up a seal to like immobilize it for fun and then wouldn't even eat it. No, 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 no. No, no. Or at least that's what the TikToks They said. like could be they can <laughs> knock false. off a seal, like right, and they'll like flip it in the air so the seal like Im- dies basically, like it's immobilized. Yeah. Now there is no research to say yeah, that they that. do that for fun. Yeah. But they are like when you crazy leave it to enough. Die. I mean like they make it like a sport. I'm I mean like, dolphins yeah. dolphins are we, much better and we, we think they're so guy. cuddly. Huh? Dolphins are vicious. Yeah. Like dolphins literally figure it out that if you flip a shark upside down, they die. Yeah. And they do it. Which is crazy. For fun. I'm telling you. Yeah, see, there's some creatures that have now starting to evolve in the water that kill for fun. Do you do have it's fun a sport. killing? sport. For them? Yeah. I guess. So anyways, the male version of a sirena, do you want to guess what it is? It's Spanish, basically. Come on. Sirena. Sireno. Very good. It's sireno. Um, <laughs> Sounds like sirene. I know. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> Which that? is Bulgarian feta cheese. <laughs> feta cheese? Sirene. It's feta cheese. Yeah, sirene. Buff. Remember? Feta I, cheese. I don't know. I, your but mama, in Bulgarian. Your mom always says feta, to be honest. Well, yeah, so you can understand. I love that. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, they are basically considered to be the same as mermaids, although they they are thought to be less evil. Because, you know. Yeah, women are crazy. Women. Psychotic. Uh, and it says that the the myth is described for mermaids to drown fishermen and warriors who worship apple yaki. Uh, in some stories, during the period of the full moon, uh, one of the embodiments of the moon, who is considered uh, is named Bulan, uh, it's basically like the child of the moon, uh, descends from the heavens to swim with the mermaids, and the mermaids protect the moon boy or the boy of the moon. From sea monsters. You didn't even show me the last one. Jesus. I mean, it's just like a, por- a portrayal of the Like, men- where are the hands dad. and shit? I don't think. I mean, I think oh, that's is, the yeah, hands. So. Yeah, it's a pretty cool picture. It is a nice picture, yes. And there's all like the little stuff around. Has pretty them cool. like full of like seaweed and coral. Like their body is almost like part of the ocean, which I think is that kind of interesting. Because usually you don't see that. With mer- I mean, like, yeah. they have seashell, like, bras, but that's about as extensive as it gets, so. This one is almost like she merged with the with the ocean. Yeah, that makes sense. No, I agree. It would make sense. I don't know how the other stuff makes sense, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't have a picture of the... Of the oh, chill, what is this? Boy. Can you please? I haven't gotten there yet. Oh, my God. Indeed. Anyways, um, basically... Yeah, they protect the boy from the sea monsters, so that's what, or that's what the legend says. So the the male ones protect the the moon boy. How did you get there? No. Oh. The mermaids protect the moon boy. But that because we're talking about the male. No, I mermaids. finished that. Oh. And then I moved on to the 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 myth. I guess the son of the moon comes down to swim in the ocean, and the mermaids protect him. From what? Sea monsters, it says. What kind of sea monster? It doesn't say. What? I mean, like, use some of your imagination, I guess. You know, you can't let it all to be explained. The Kraken? I don't think that would be considered in this mythology. Why not? I'm sure there's a giant octopus creature somewhere. Maybe, but I don't think they would call it a Kraken. Yeah, they call it Godzilla. No, no, they don't. <laughs> And it says when a mermaid falls in love with a human. Hey, that's where Godzilla came from, the water yeah, first, please. right? So you always do this. You interrupt for the randomest things. So why are we talking about Godzilla if it's supposed to be a mermaid? Yeah, you said they protect from sea monsters. Godzilla is a sea monster. Where it comes from the sea first, because it was ex- the new what happened in the water, and the radiation hit Godzilla. So then it's not a Godzilla sea monster, became it's, just a giant a, it's just a lizard, lab experiment. Which is in the water, and the way it came to Japan was through the water. Same with with King Kong. It came from under the water, grabbed them, they started going Sure, you know what, Godzilla is a mermaid. Sure, we'll go with that. Godzilla is a mermaid. Sure. We're, we're that's, the title of the, that's the title, Godzilla we're, is a mermaid. We're going to get so much flag for that, I think. <laughs> Anyways, 
Can All we right, let so me finish, are we at, please? We're in India slash Japan. No, we're still trying to finish Philippines because we oh. keep interrupting. <laughs> When a mermaid falls in love with a human in this mythology, she or he can become tame and obedient to the human. So they will obey the human. That's bullshit. There's no way. It has to be the other way around. Okay. Well, that's the folk. That's that's the myth. That's the legend. That's the way they believe. Of course they would. They always, everyone thinks humans are on top of the world. Oh my God, Chris! <laughs> right, because it's mythology. not. That's totally actually opposing to the norm of the myth. Because the no, like the normal way of the myth is that the mermaids have this enchanting voice that calls humans to their death. So technically, this is just flip upside down a little bit. Yeah, I guess. So what are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know either. Um, I am just here to play devil's advocate because it's sure. fun. Anyways, do gog. Do gongs, which are sea turtles, uh, in small cetaceans, such as dolphins, usually accompany the sirena. So, like, you know how in The Little Mermaid is flounder, the little fish? Little Mermaid, Disney, they, she has a little fish, flounder, and she has the crab. Oh, yeah, the scared fish all the time? Very good. Right. In this particular case, it would be a sea turtle and a dolphin. That's so much cooler than a fish and a crab. And a cra no, fair. a lobster. It's a lobster. What? What the fuck? I swear, but he doesn't walk sideways. Bet with, he bet walks. With me. No. Come on, bet no. with me. No. Come on, you sounded so sure. Hold on, I'll bet with you <laughs> in five seconds here. It's a crab, my love. Anyways. Uh, they're usually believed to accompany the sirena. The, the sirena has a beautiful and enchanting voice that can attract and hypnotize men, especially fishermen. Sirenas sing to sailors and enchant them, distracting them from their work and causing them to walk off ship decks and cause shipwrecks. And it says they sing an enchanting voice while hiding among the rocks by the shore. When the men hear these songs, they're hypnotized and are abducted by the sirena. Some folks' traditions claim that the sirena carries their victims under the sea, sacrificing them to the water deities. Other stories claim that the sirena pretend to need rescuing from drowning, luring men into the sea, and then proceed to squeeze the life out of them, um, and they tend to fall Anaconda prey to the hoax. Style. And a, yeah, I guess. I mean... I'm so sorry, what did your research lead to? Is it a lobster? <laughs> We can take a pause on the topic for this. Oh, man. I don't know. It's I a crab. I couldn't figure it out. It's a crab. <laughs> of course you didn't figure it out. It's undetermined. Right. Maybe you guys can let us know. It's literally the first thing that it comes out. It's like, oh, like, Sebastian, what is a crab? It's a Jamaican something something crab. Yes, it's a crab. But it doesn't look like a crab. It's a crab. They even in the movie, they have the French chef. And he's like, wee wee. And he's trying to do stuffed crab. For dinner? Oh, yeah. So, like, what do you think? What, what if it was stuffed lobster? I don't know. No. Anyways, so that's basically Philippines. What do you think? Pretty cool. Yeah. So, basically, to summarize, they, if they fall in love with you, you control them. Otherwise, they have an enchanting voice that can lead men, especially fishermen, to a pretty crappy death. Wait, but I thought it was they have to fall in love with you. The mermaids has to fall in love with you in order for you to control the mermaid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, but otherwise, they have a really... 95% impossible. Oh, yeah. But I'm guessing so some like, men might be like, yeah, I can do that. And then it's like they start singing and it's like, bye-bye. I can do anything. Yeah. Me, 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 me. There's some interesting... And like, I guess the person, if it, like the way they describe the mermaid with like the torso and the head of a woman and yep. then the tail... I find it very like similar to like Little Mermaid. I'm trying because yeah. like most people just know about the kind of the Little Mermaid dash parts of the Caribbean. So this is really interesting to see like how each part of the world. Well, actually, they kind of they kind of did that in in Pirates, right? With that one guy who fell in love with that mermaid, who True. almost died. True. And she fell in love with him. True. And so like she would base she almost did anything for him now. I mean, she gave him the tear. Yeah. Yeah. And then he lost it. And then he lost like it. Like a scrub. 
Typical yeah. scrub lord. Yes. Anyways, uh, we'll move on to India dash Japan. I thought you said, ah, whatever. What? No. We're still in. We're still in D. Yeah, but I thought you said Japan was separate, and China and India were the same ish. No. no, no, no. <laughs> no, I said India has a lot of similarities with other countries. So, for example, there are two types of Asian mermaids. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is called the Matsyagana. Matsyaga, I don't know how you say that, which originated in India. And this exact creature exists in Cambodia, Indonesia, uh, Laos, Burma, uh, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. So there's a lot of places that believe in this. And then there is the other one, which is the Japanese... Ningyu, Ningu, Ningyu, um, which is totally different, by the way, that the, the, the physical differences are actually quite outstanding. Okay. Yeah. So to begin, it is believed that the first recording of a mermaid in history uh, was uh, Matsya, which basically translates to fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in what language? Hindi, I believe. It is the what? avatar of the Hindi god Vishnu in well, the avatar? form of a fish. Avatar? Does she have all four elements? No. She's so no it's, avatar it's like then? A, it's like the embodiment How? of the Hindi god Vishnu in the form of a fish. How dare they? It's actually pretty interesting. Um, Who's this god? It's one Vishnu? of their main gods. In Vishnu? The, Vishnu. Yeah, and it's his, um, the, embodiment, the embodiment of the god in the form of a fish. Mm. Uh, it says Matsya is described to have rescued the first man, Manu, from a great uh, like danger. Right. Says, yeah. And it says Matsya may be depicted as a giant fish or anthropomorphically with a human torso and the bottom half as a fish. Okay. So. Um, and it says it can also be very similar to the Nagas, which can be described as a giant snake or a snake with a human torso. So pretty different, actually. Like you have fish and then you have snake. Potentially. Tail, Even potentially. though the picture doesn't look like that. Yeah. The picture looks like a standard mermaid. Yeah. With Well, you, you have some differences, stuff. like... For whatever reason, the ears are like gills. You see, like the ears are kind of gills. So I they. Thought, I thought that's just a crown. No, they have gills. In oh yeah, this I'm depiction. Sure they got gills, no, but as but ears. Doesn't even make sense. It's kind of interesting, actually. And then obviously the the torso of a woman and the tail of a fish. However, they can also have the tail of a snake. Ooh, if they're bodies. Huh? They're Batiasis. Interesting. Now, the Ningyu, um, which is the Japanese version, it basically <laughs> translates to human fish, but it can also oh be translated God. to... Are you looking at the picture? That's amazing. It's insane. Uh, but That's it can a- also be translated to a mermaid. Uh, it's a fish-like creature from Japanese folklore. Um, anciently, it was described with a monkey's mouth... Uh, with a small teeth like a fish, shining golden scales, and a quiet voice like a skylark or a flute. Uh, its flesh is pleasant tasting. Don't ask me who tried that. Yeah. And anyone who eats it will attain remarkable longevity. So they can live for a long, long time. Yeah, forever. It doesn't take forever. However, oh, catching yeah. an ingyu was believed to bring storms and misfortunes. So fishermen who caught these creatures were said to throw them back into the sea. Um, an ingyu washed onto a beach with an uh, an, ing- an ingyu who washed into a beach was an omen of war and calamity. Uh oh, uh, there was an anime actually about this kid who ate who ate a mermaid, which yeah, looked so like that. It would be this. And uh, yeah, it was all about him like being able to live for a super long time. So he kept killing himself to like. Oh, how lovely! Well, it, it was because he could see the future when he whenever he'd kill himself or he would get killed, um, and then he'd come back to life with like what could happen type thing. And he could like pick which thread of of universe destiny he could that's be in. Kind of crazy. Pretty cool, but it also it's not amazing or anything. But yeah, that's this is the ugliest mermaid I've seen. <laughs> like no yeah, offense to the it's, Japanese it's just a pure fish 
with a head of a human. But a monkey, it's like a human monkey. Yeah. It's bizarre. And he has like the 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 horns. Hornsies. It's so weird. Yeah. Anyways, no offense to the Japanese. I guess they're just trying to make it look creepy, but um hey, they always like to do things differently. Quite far from them from the from that. the norm. I appreciate that. Yeah. So I guess that would be that would be that. So yeah. moving on to Africa. Um I just picked the main one. So one of the main ones, as far as folklore for sea creatures, sea folks, mermaids type, uh, would be the Mami Wata, which is a water, water spirit uh, venerated in West Central and Southern Africa. Um, and it is basically, in simple terms, uh, a spirit that usually is female, can be male, um, and is often described as a mermaid-like figure with a woman's upper body, Often nude, hey. and and the uh, hindquarters of a fish or a serpent. The hindquarters, isn't that how you say that? <laughs> yeah, no, just a funny way to say uh, lower half or like butt hindquarters. I guess. The booty guys, the booty it ain't that big a deal. I mean, like, come on, they're trying to be PG, I guess. Oh no, PG. Nice. Okay. Jesus. Nice. So Jesus, the existence, like je ne sais quoi at this point, je ne sais quoi, yeah. dear. So the existence and spiritual importance of Mami Wata is deeply rooted in ancient tradition and mythology of the coastal southern, south southeastern Nigerians. Mami Wata often carries expensive baubles such as combs, mirrors, and watches, and a large snake. Uh, this snake usually symbolizes divination and divinity. Um, this snake usually uh, very frequently accompanies her, wrapping itself around her and laying its head between her bosom. Yeah. <laughs> around her, her breast. boobies. Other times, she may try to pass as completely human, wandering busy markets or patroning bars. She may also manifest in a number of other forms, including a man. If you encounter her and she wishes to make you hers, there are only two answers. Acceptance means wealth and fortune. Rejection spells the ruin of your family, finances, and job. If someone comes down with an incurable... Don't say no to that. No. If somebody comes down <laughs> with an incurable disease or illness, Mami Wata often takes the blame. Uh, the illness is evidence that Mami Wata has taken an interest in the afflicted person and only she can cure him or her. Similarly, when children get sick, mothers usually ask Mami Wata to save them. So it's really complicated, actually. It's almost like they blame her, but they ask her to cure. So she's the cause, but also the solution. It's actually quite interesting. That's so silly, though. What do you mean? Like, how can you go... Ask for someone's help and then say it's their fault if they don't help you. I don't think it's necessarily ask for someone's help. I think is they think she's behind it and she, only she can fix it. So it's like, oh, you did this. Can you please get rid of it? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, I guess in its own way. Um, and it does say like, um, similarly, several other ailments may be attributed to the water spirit in nigeria an entire hierarchy of the mami wata priesthood exists so there's a priesthood behind her um, in the region to officiate ceremonies maintain the shrines conduct healing rituals and initiate new priests and priestesses into the service of various mami wata deities so they literally have their own priesthood that believe in the deities you're crazy Pretty interesting, actually. Do you know when the first written version of these are? Of mermaids? No, for like each country. No. So or it's kind of difficult to trail back. Um, the one that we for sure know uh, is the oldest written record would be Babylon uh, in like 4,000, 5,000 BCE. Um, but there could have been tales because you got to think history has like written history and verbal history um so like it could have been a verbal story for a long time yeah. but the first ever recorded written mermaid would probably be babylon mm -hmm. as far as like records that people agree with there are some historians that believe it was actually india um 
But like almost every country says we we came up with it first. So it's really <laughs> difficult. Of course. To pinpoint for a for a historian point. Well, yeah, from yeah, so you could say like yeah, who who knows who first started speaking about it, but it was first written about in Babylon. That we know of. Yeah. Yet. I mean, history is always changing. Yeah, We're found, finding yeah, things. Yeah, we find things all the time. Um, but it's just really interesting because we've talked so far about two separate continents and they believe more or less in the yeah, same similar thing. Stuff. Yeah. But wait, in this in this one in Africa it's she's a snake. Um, not necessarily. She can take different forms. So she is believed to have the torso of a woman and the tail of a fish, uh, with a snake wrapped around her. Uh, but there are some versions in which it's just a snake bottom. Tail. So yeah. it, it truly does which depend. Which is the like, same as the... Like, see, I have this one, one, which in this particular picture, she has the tail of a snake, and then she has a snake wrapped around the tail. But, like, even... I don't think that's the tail of a snake. I think that's just a very long yeah, so. tail. So it's kind of difficult to say. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's a bit weird to describe. But in either way, like, you still have a half... Like, a torso of a woman with some form of amphibian yeah bottom which fishy. is pretty interesting a fishy bottom yeah okay moving on to europe europe this is where you're from that's where i'm from yeah i couldn't find anything in bulgaria i'm sure there is some version um Maybe. but I, I genuinely couldn't find anything um i mean the closest thing they got is the black sea and well i mean now i don't know about before obviously it used to be bigger apparently true so maybe they had something from the other shores but now they just got the black sea, so there's like you can see the other side. So funny story. Um, in Europe, actually, in Scotland, in eighteen thirty, the body of a mermaid was found. Um, it was believed to be a full on mermaid situation going on. Um they the sheriff of the town believed that the mer the mermaid deserved uh some form of burial. So they actually burned, uh, not burned, they buried her body somewhere. And people are still trying to find this body because the town people swear and persist that it was a real mermaid. Yeah. But we have yet to find the grave. Well, don't they know where the grave is? No, they never mentioned it. They never, like, they never put a tombstone. No one ever wrote it down. So, like, they forgot about it or there's no way somebody's got to remember it? So apparently they don't. That's, so then it's BS. I mean, that's the storyline, right? Yeah, of course. It's a lovely story. I guess. Anyways, uh, basically in Scottish folktale, it envisions the mermaids as owning seal skins. So they... Huh? Yeah, so they don seal skins. Seal skins. Yeah. They wear seal skins. Yeah. And this allows them to live in the water. Is there a picture? No, I couldn't find one for them. Um, but I'm sure there is. Uh, but it's just basically like they wear the skin of a seal and that's what allows them to live underwater. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean like some magical yeah. shit is going on. Which is also very similar to the cap which uh, mermaids of Irish folktale wear. So Irish and Scottish, they believe that there's something that the actual creature wears in order to live underwater, not necessarily something they're born with. Um, wow, mm -hmm. that's strange. A bit different. Many Irish and Scottish folktales are mermaids who marry humans, but later return to the ocean. Sometimes mermaids of these folklores are the ones being kidnapped themselves, so the human kidnaps the mermaid. Uh, some Irish, Scottish, and British families even claim to be descendants of mermaids who intermarried with humans. Of course they did. <laughs> of course they do. Everyone wants to be half mermaid. Half mermaid, half dragon. Yeah. So um, not even half dragons, just they're dragons. Nice. So funnily enough, the Welsh folklore often portrays mermaids as being loving and helpful to humans. So they're kind of like nice, friendly neighbor neighbors. Um, while Greece portrays mermaids as using their irresistible voice to lure sailors to their death. Dun, dun, dun. Which, by the way, this is actually in Greece. In the case of Greece, this was very clearly recorded through history in their uh, sonnets and their poems, like the Od uh, the Odyssey, which is like a very popular classic in literature. <laughs> 
anyways, they do portray mermaids as the stereotypical ones that we know um, that would like, you know, sing and the sailors would go and the ships would crash and they would kill that way. So in that case, I guess Europe is more along the lines of what we know, with the exception of the Irish and the Welsh, because they believe, uh, the Irish and the Scottish, because they believe you can wear something to become a mermaid. That's so cool. Yeah. Technically, yeah, that, that's pretty cool. So funny enough. So there- wait, does that mean that those, they think that mermaids are just regular people who I have some sort of power to take I couldn't find that the in abilities the of a seal? I don't know. <clears throat> because also how do you get that cap dash uh seal skin you catch a seal and then you skin it i don't think that's how it would work what are you talking there's got to be more to that well if you are scottish or irish leave it in the comments below there's got to be more to this story i just got a blips of it right because there's so much to talk, to talk about yeah you know but anyways um in France, actually, there is a tale of the legend of a mermaid named Melusina uh, or Melusine. Uh, she was... Like limousine? <laughs> Melus- I'm going to stick with Melusina here. It's a figure of European folklore, a female spirit of fresh water in a holy well or a river. She's usually depicted as a woman who is a serpent or a fish from the waist down. Um, she's also sometimes illustrated with wings, two tails, or both. Wow. I know. ones that got extra abilities. They were like, wings, sh- two tails? Everything Regular in there. mermaids get destroyed. <laughs> uh, one tail says... So, th- so this one is could probably go land, she's, sky, she's, yeah. and water. Yeah. She's the ultimate being. I mean, what do you mean land? She well, has she'll two probably tails. be able to... S- s- that's basically two legs. That's pretty true, actually. I wonder. So, like, you can just start walking. You'll just look a little clumsy, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> or flopping. Maybe. Mm. It says, one of the tales says Melusine herself was the daughter of the fairy uh, Pristine and the king Alinas, or Albani. Um, Melusine's mother leaves her husband, taking her daughters to the Isle of Abalon. Often... He breaks an oath never to look in, her, uh, never to look at her while she's taking a bath. Uh, so basically, there's different versions of, of this story, but in both versions, uh, Melusine or Melusine's mother uh, made like made their husband, the king, make a promise that they would not like watch them bathe. And in both versions, the man breaks the oath. Shocker. Typical. <laughs> um, but they break the oath and then she gets really mad. <laughs> She's cheesed. Yeah. And she curses the land and leaves. Shocker. Flies away. There is another version in which is the opposite. Actually, like Melusine marries a nobleman and he finds out about like that she's a mermaid. And then he gets mad and then she leaves. But then the town is cursed still. Basically, in both versions, the poor people that did nothing, they get the... Watch out! Basically. Basically. GG's to those people. Yeah. There are similar stories told in Italy, Portugal, Spain, Russia, Ethiopia, Africa, China, and Japan, Scandinavia. They all have mermaids in folk tales that vary between evil and good. Even the Germans believe in mermaids. They think they're pretty da- pretty dangerous. But we don't got time for all that. No, but I'm just summarizing. So. There's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Funnily enough, I thought it was interesting to kind of end like the storylines of the mermaids with America. Yeah. Okay. With the Americas land. So bland. America's land. And the Caribbean. That's where okay. I'm from. Yep. See, we have interesting stuff. Of course you do. So, for example, uh, the Neo-Taino nations of the Caribbean identify a mermaid called Aikaya with attributes of the goddess Jawa and the hibiscus flower of the Majawa tree, hibiscus tree. Uh, the name means she with a lovely voice. Among the Neo-Taino nations of the Caribbean, such as Puerto Rico and Cuba, whoop, whoop, she was known as a seductive and um, generous, 
seductively Bien. generous. Mm-hmm. Being that uh, was, she was the, like, she was like, "Don't worry, I'll seduce you gently." That's not what I'm talking so about. She was generous in the way she seduced. Very, very generous. <laughs> um, she was the incarnation of beauty and sin, and gave men the pleasure, uh, but robbed them of free will. So she would enslave men. Hey, you like the government. Yeah. And says, <laughs> oh, nice. Oh my God. Did you say the government? <laughs> that just landed on me. <laughs> and he said, yeah. And then I'm like, wait, what? Oh, you can't say that. No, it's funny. Why not? That's a joke. Yeah, but isn't that weird that we can't say it even as a joke? Sometimes your jokes can be quite weird. But like the fact you can't even say that like a joke because everyone would be like, oh my God, how could you possibly say that? I mean, I, la, feel, la, like, la, I la. feel like you would have a lot of people on your side for this one. Anyways. Yeah, because there's people who will say that and you'll be like, I mean, do you some, have a life? There's people that believe like, that we're being injected with a chip. So like, obviously when it comes to government control, there's several people that would agree with you. I mean, yeah, government control is totally a thing. That's what they do. It's their job. Yeah, um, but it's how that becomes the discussion topic, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they can only for so long control you normally until they got to use some more aggressive means. Just to be on the safer page, um, he does not believe in chips inside vaccines. I feel the need to explain because you're kind of hinting at the fact that you do and you genuinely don't. And I am not about to get you like in that, like, you know, in that land. So, yeah, who knows what they've been doing? Absolutely not. Oh my god! The other day you were like, "What? What movie did we watch?" That the you were Giver yesterday. The Giver. We watched The Giver, which is a good book. Um, so we watched the movie, which is not so good. Um, it wasn't bad. Yeah. Uh, we watched it, and Chris is like, "Oh, what if? Because they get vaccinated, and the vaccine is basically like taking their emotions away." So he's like, "Oh, that's what this vaccine. What is. if this is?" <laughs> I literally face planted. I'm like, you think if they actually, that was the goal and it was like uh, emotion control, there would be so many people going crazy about this. Like people would just be so chill. We well, have yeah, the people who are not getting it are going crazy. People I don't know, who man. got it I are chilling like, out. Uh, I've known some people that got it, like they're fully vaccinated and they are more intense than the people who haven't gotten it. But more intense in which way? Like they're like, if we should be vaccinated. Live for exactly. Like, Whoa, they're getting down. more crazy into like samity, conformity. Samity? Yeah, like everyone being the same. Same midi. Someone <laughs> Google word. that. <laughs> Add it to the dictionary. Add it to the dictionary. Same midi. Okay, can I f- please continue? Yeah. Okay. So basically, this mermaid uh, was believed to be visited. I'm going to put huge quotation marks there. Visited by the men. Okay. They went for a special trip to see her. Uh, seduced by her beauty. Most Achaeans opt for nudity, so they don't believe in clothes, just mermaids. Of course They not. have no shame about their bodies, of course. Their active lifestyles usually keep them lean and shapely. Most are very attractive. In fact, if an Achaean wears any garments, um, it's usually a small skirt or apron that they wrap around their waist. Wait, what's an Achaean? Mermaid. Oh, okay. Ica- Ikea, yeah. Um... A small skirt or apron that usually wraps around their waist. They, what would they need that they have a tail? Um, sometimes they just wear it for fun. Oh, okay. They believe in full nudity. Right. Um, they almost always go topless. Uh, and they were banished to a distant island because of how much they attracted the men. Uh, the banishment <laughs> failed to work, however. Who since banished them? The women? Yeah. <laughs> And like the older. <laughs> They're like, you're stealing all our men. I mean, technically they were. Mm-hmm. Um, the banishment. Well, maybe they need to do their job better. <laughs> what the dangerous music now? <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> no. Well, that works. That works. No. Yeah. You wake up and it's like, where's Chris? <sighs> no, babe. It's just, what? 
Like they had better seductive power than their women did. So they were like, yo, let's go to these ones. Only makes sense. You sound like a jackass. (laughs) But it's funny. It's really not. It's called black humor. I don't like it. (laughs) Some people will. So you're telling me if a mermaid just walls into your life, (laughs) just sings some melodic song, and you're like all zombie style brains eat brains going into the ocean, (sighs) I'm just going to be like, oh, well, she's better than me and let you drown? (laughs) Yeah, I guess not. Uh huh. <laughs> if there's any mermaids out there, like I'm more than happy to land. Oh my god, no, stop. Uh huh. You keep interrupting me and I keep losing where I'm at. Yeah, we got like 15 minutes. Oh my god, it's almost done, but you keep like stopping me. Okay, the banishment to the island failed. However, since men went out of their way to visit the women, anyways, uh, they were renounced seducers, uh, apparently. Uh, they could appear as either gender to lure men and women away from their responsibilities. Uh, when angered, unfortunately, they grew very dangerous. Alton, uh, acting almost like a Kelpie of European legend, uh, which was like this uh, uh, spirit of the water that usually lived in rivers, and they would like rub you and drown you to the bottom of the yeah, and eat you most likely. Fabulous. Um, fun. Uh, luring their victims into the sea, drowning them under the waves. For the most part... Achaeans are good nature, energetic, and uh, eager <laughs> folks. Uh, they're usually very charming dancers. That's kind of what the legend starts. Uh, so the legend begins with um, seven beautiful and charming dancers. Uh, like on land or in water? Yeah, on land. The humans. Did they get feet? Yeah, they were, hu- they were humans at first. That's where the legend begins. There were seven oh. beautiful dancers. Um, and they had their own, like, style. Um, okay. Yeah. The last dancer basically was, like, the most seductive. <laughs> okay. I guess. Uh, she had a very sweet and melodic voice, and she danced very, very well. Um, it is hardly surprising, though, that no man usually could keep himself away. Uh, so she kept perturbing uh, the peace of the village, uh, moving the men away from work, from the fulfillment of their duties, and from their families. Uh, usually, she was then banished to the island. Yeah. Did not work. Men came to yeah. see her. Nice. Uh, and I guess something, what happened? Wait, so are all seven of them turned Some into died. Mermaids, no, or so just I think her? I'm not entirely positive, but they basically said that a lot of them died and i guess the last one survived hey one out of seven those are good odds to becoming a mermaid yeah the men only had eyes for akeya which was the dancer they all came to see her uh and then the women decided that they were not happy about this so they went to the chief elder and they decided to exile the dancer um and then it says they came and asked the advice of Semi, which was the Jawa goddess. And this, they gave them uh, small black seeds. And then the following instructions, they told them to put the seeds um, as amulets. And they would be forgive, forgiven for their infidelity. Like, I'm guessing this was the men. The and men it, were forgiven? Yeah, so the men went, I guess, to the goddess for forgiveness. And she gave them the seeds. And told them to um, kind of wear them as amulets and to tell their wife to plant them in their yards. When the flowers appeared, uh, they will see their sorrow and problems fly away. And they will receive again the love and passion of their husbands and boyfriends. Oh, never mind. So I guess this, I'm so sorry, I'm getting this is so complicated because it was in Spanish and I had to like, it was like three o'clock in the morning I was translating. Point is... Um, this dancer was like incredibly good. So the wives went to the goddess and asked for help. And the goddess gave them the seeds and told them to plant the seeds. And that once the seeds grew and bloom, their husbands would come back. Oh, okay. Basically. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it says, all the seeds carefully treated by the women gave origin to the tree that we know as Majawa or the Majawa, which means Mother Jawa. The flowers 
uh, leaves and wood are considered to be from that time an amulet to prevent infidelity. Uh, the tree grew with the first flowers. A hurricane devastated the area, destroying the hut of Acadia and the elder woman that accompanied her. The waves dragged both to the sea, turning her into a mermaid and turning the old lady into a turtle. <laughs> so it was the end of the empire she ruled over the men of Jawa. The legend of Achaia does not speak of her life in the sea. There are some who think she turned into a lonely mermaid, swimming purpose, purpose, purposeless, purposefulness, purposeless, purposeless, um, in the open sea. Uh, and then some believe that she turned evil and started condemning those who wandered to the sea into the death. Evil. It's really interesting though. So basically like the goddess gave them the seeds. They planted the seeds. They grew into a tree, which uh, actually we have trees like this in Cuba. Mm. And uh, basically the there was a storm that came into the island where she was with the old lady that accompanied her and they got swept into the ocean and she turned into a mermaid and the old lady turned into a turtle. How crappy is that? You know, you're a good solid friend. You go with your friend, she gets banished. You're like, I got you. I'll come with you. And then she gets turned into a beautiful mermaid and you get stuck as a sea turtle. <laughs> Something there does not fit. It does not fit. Maybe mermaids, when they get old, they turn to turtles. Ooh, it's possible. What are they different? Because like? turtles are live for a really long time what but that they don't even look similar so it would make more it's sense it's called if you said transmutation snake or fish nice so just to summarize in the in the americas it's very much so the typical mermaid tale uh, there have of been disney of disney there have been some sightings like in british columbia uh there was this group of people in a ferry and they said to have seen a mermaid uh in 1967 <laughs> Isn't that what they all say? Isn't this all just based off of hearsay or hearsay? Hearsay? Yeah. No. It's like, you know. I mean, they, 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 um, someone said that they snapped a picture. And where's the picture? Right here. So a lady chilling on the water I mean, to in a me, mermaid out costume. I mean, yeah. It's black and white. Come on. It is black and white. It is pretty blurry. It's like the Loch Ness monster picture. Yeah, it's it could kind be a of a piece of driftwood for all. It's kind know. of very hard to see. Yeah, not very convincing evidence. Nice. I mean, call it as I see it. Yeah. Fair enough. Need more proof. Yeah. But hey, if it is cool, I am missing the colder regions. Um, but let me make it clear. I don't think mermaids wanted to be in the poles <laughs> or anything like that. So like, um, yeah, is there any, any in Norse mythology mermaids? Or so no? no, I did Google it. Um, they, there, there's like, it's weird. They have different things that come from the ocean. Um, uh, but there's no mermaids, you know, there were the ocean Kings, which were basically warriors, I guess. Um, not really. Uh, and then you have obviously the Midgar. Um, I mean, they had sirens, didn't they? No. You swear in God of War there were sirens. Yeah, but that's not Norse mythology. I couldn't find it. I went through like several sources trying to find mermaids. Huh. Maybe that was in the other ones? Maybe. I but I would not be called that, I guess, if there is. I swear there were some water creatures in God of War. No, there are water creatures, but I just couldn't find anything that would be the equivalent to a mermaid. Hmm. That makes any sense. I don't remember mm. what it was. I'm not sure. That's cool. But that's it, basically it from our mates. Yeah. Um, there are some videos of like sightings of mermaids. Uh, like for example, there was one um, that someone uploaded. It's anonymous, and uh, it it was said to be uh, a migration of dolphins, but the pattern in which they hit the water was a bit odd. So people thought there were actually migrations of mermaids. However, I did watch the video and there's like a boat right alongside the migration. And it hit me. I'm like, if it actually was mermaids and you're standing in that boat, you're telling me you wouldn't just like, you know, <laughs> cast a net or take a picture. You know what I mean? 
So I'm like, no. Most likely, it was a migration of dolphins. Uh, maybe they just looked weird when they hit the... Because it looks... The pattern is almost like arms. Because it's like, you know, you see the splash of the body, but there's also like two splashes alongside the body. It's almost like like arms. But it could be the fins, because dolphins has, have fins, you know? So I'm guessing it could be the fins of the dolphins as they, like, you know, they hit the water. You see the body and then the, the two fins. Yeah, but when humans or even mermaids swim, I don't see them going like, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, like, it doesn't make much sense. They'll go like this or like, they'll just be like, what the head? Wee, wee. Yeah. No, they had me for a sec. And then I saw the boat and I'm like, uh, no. Because to me, that boat looked like a marine, bi- bi- a marine biologist boat or like something from like a, uh, an aquarium or something like that. So I'm like, um, no. Mm-hmm. If it was, absolutely not. Also, there was another one from Israel uh, where it was like, um, you see something, something similar to a mermaid, kind of looking pretty ugly. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's sitting on a rock and you see it turn its head to see the human and like kind of squatting away into the ocean. Um, and there was actually like, a, I think it was like a $1 million reward if someone could prove that that was a true video. Um, but nothing ever came of it. And fun fact, actually, National Geographic took credit for that and said that it was a video they created, which got like 3.6 wow. billion million or billion views. Jesus. Yeah. And they like created this like... Um, this like uh what's it called documentary documentary about mermaids they even brought like uh specialists which by the way were actors and made it pretend like they were like having a an interview about this like videos and that it was a real thing Wow! and people got cheesed (laughs) when they found that it was a hoax if pissed okay like they were like why what's the point i mean yeah, so they weren't too, too happy. They also had that video that I showed you that was like circulating all over TikTok, which was supposed to be uh, an Iceland or like Greenland um, group of uh, scientists deep underwater. They're in a submarine and you just see like a hand go on the glass like poof, and then you see something swim away. And like it went viral when he first hit the Internet. Turns out they, they believe that uh, National Geographic was behind it again. <laughs> Yeah, you know, National Geographic. They want easy money. Man, people were pissed because those two videos, they went viral. So it, nobody could explain it. So that was not fun. Uh-huh. So I couldn't necessarily find if the Greenland video, the one that under with the submarine, was actually debunked by National Geographic or if they just showed the video and pretended that the scientists that they were interviewing were the ones in the video. But... I'm actually not entirely sure, but both videos were oh, debunked. Oh, yeah, wait, didn't you show me that video? Yeah, both videos were debunked, I oh, guess. One more I than the other. I thought you said that one was like, because like, you were freaking out about it originally. Yeah, because when I first saw it, I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. And then I guess it was aired on National Geographic, so people think that National Geographic was behind it because they, I mean, they yeah, were behind the Israel. There. If it airs there. Yeah, that's what I said too. <laughs> But I was really upset about that. And then there was another TikTok, which looked so creepy. Is this like thing? I don't even, I cannot even call it a mermaid because the head, like the neck was so long. And it was like, it looked almost like a mask in its face. And then like, like really shaggy hair. And like the tail was super creepy and standing on top of a rock and you see the neck like twist it's so gross mm-hmm. um and like nobody could explain it but to me for a second for a split second it looks like someone wearing um a mask but i still cannot explain that neck so it could be an alter video there is really no explanation for it but nonetheless super super creepy <laughs> yeah yeah so there are some sightings it's just difficult because you know we live in the world of a uh, Media. And editing and stuff. Editing the videos very much, yes. But nonetheless, it is kind of interesting that multiple continents have a pretty similar theme pattern as far as like mermaids go. And they're like I mean, yeah. very, very different apart. They're all very pretty similar. Mm-hmm. They get people yeah. with their voice. Most of them. And kill them. Yeah, drown them. 
food. Yum, yum, yum. Some are good, some are bad. Some have f- uh, the tail of a fish, some have a snake. For the most part, amphibian bottom, female top, various uh, levels of good or bad. Mm-hmm. Except for Japan. Japan, Japan, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> they they built different. They went <laughs> a different route on that one. <laughs> they built different. Nonetheless, pretty interesting. Yeah. But yeah, thank you for hanging out with us. Yeah. Uh, we kind of covered almost the whole globe as far as mermaid tales. Yeah. Bit of a summary. Summarize, yeah. Summary. But thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, we will be back next Sunday and we'll see you midweek for our regular video. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget to like. Comment. And subscribe. And ring the bell. Ding. So you don't miss anything. Mm-hmm. We'll see you guys on the next one. See Bye. Ya. Peace. Bam. There's no music going. Oh, you're hearing it? This is cr- stupid. <laughs>